For many years, Stabila, the king of levels, has set the bar with their high-end, extremely accurate levels. We recently took a look at the brand new Milwaukee Red Stick levels and we compared them to the Stabila 196, which we reviewed last month. The Red Stick was specifically designed to compete in the premium level arena as, and more specifically to go up against the Stabila 196. The fit and finish of the Red Stick, it, it's, it's a little bulky. It, it has a stout, heavy duty feel. Um, it actually has a beautiful finish. It's, it's got the bright Milwaukee side, you know, the red sides, and it's got a beautifully milled working edges, shiny working edges. On one side of the level, on the, on the uh, plum vials, it has a overmold, rubber overmold, non-slip grips, which obviously it's to prevent milling, um, marring milled surfaces or prevent it from sliding when you're holding it on the wall. As far as flatness of the milled surfaces, we evaluated the red stick, um, the levels, we looked at five of them and we placed them on a machine straight edge. And then we checked each level on that straight edge uh, between the two surfaces with feeler gauges. All of the levels that, that we checked, the, the surfaces were extremely flat. There were no issues there. Not until later when we started doing drop tests. <laughs> um, high visibility fluid. One of the one of the key features of a good level, I guess, is, is, is visibility and readability of the vials. If you can't see the vials, it's, it's not a good level. The red stick has excellent visibility and it's probably its best trait. Level manufacturers will all claim that their recipe for color vial, the color of their vial juice is the best. And there are a lot of arguments and theories about which vial fluid, blue, green, yellow, orange, is better. Uh, Empire uses bluish, like a bluish vial juice, and they say that uh, that's easier for the eye to decipher the, the bubble meniscus. Well, Milwaukee on the red stick chose a high visibility color similar or mimicking the ANSI 107-2010 standard, which is the standard for high visibility safety clothing. They felt that the the color they chose is better in all light conditions and really highlighted the, their bubble meniscus. I can tell you this, after doing the head-to-head -head and evaluating the, the red stick levels, the yellow-green color is preferable in most low-light conditions as well as all conditions. The low light is especially important. Milwaukee uses um, what they call sharp sight technology. <clears throat> it's a combination of their bubble color, but also these large black bands on the outer edges of their vial. And it's designed to bring light into and highlight the edge of that bubble meniscus. And these bands, uh, supposedly they create a high contrast edge that the magnified bubble is easy to read. And it really is easy to read. Uh, we looked at accuracy. Level accuracy is important in construction levels and we performed basic evaluations to test for that. Uh, the test was basically placing the levels on a flat level surface and evaluating it in both directions, flipping it and checking it. We did the same thing on the plum as well. I tested five levels, all different sizes, uh, uh, some Stabila, but I tested the Red Stick 16, 24, 32, 48, and 72 inch level for plum and level. Um, all five levels passed with one level vial being slightly out of level. The Red Stick level also is a little bit finicky when determining pitch. And what I mean by that is if, you, if you're holding it and you're trying to use the bubble a little bit, pitch is important in the wet trades like masonry where slope, setting driveways, patios, or, or landscape work is important. Um, the Red Stick frame design is, like I said earlier, it's a, it's a rugged, bulky frame design. It's got these uh, beefy milled rails on all four edges of it. And Milwaukee inserted a magnesium backbone into the level. It's kind of like a block of magnesium. And the magnesium backbone is an internal rib structure that sits in the center of the cutaway where the center level vial is. And they chose magnesium obviously because it's light so it doesn't make the vial too heavy. And it's designed to protect that open vial cutout and reinforce the frame, preventing frame from being deformed. So we tested the frame strength. We placed the levels under stress on both edges, up and flat, and we loaded them all the way up to 320 pounds. The purpose of the test was to accelerate job site use and not almost create like a scenario of the level getting caught in a door jam as you're pushing a cart through it or something and, and kind of getting caught, you know, like 250 pounds and whoops. Um, so we did that. 
The strength testing rig that we used was the same one we used in our construction level head-to-head -head article. It's pretty much, well, it's pretty simple actually and effective. We used a motorcycle jack to prop up a weighted pallet and we basically used straps and chains to, to center the pallet on the level. Uh, when everything was set with loaded with weight, we would lower the weight completely and it would, you know, it's centered on that level. And then we would take measurements before, during, and after so that we had a complete picture of the level strength as well as the elasticity and to see if the level returned back to flat. The load wasn't, uh, we didn't apply the load long, but just long enough to measure deflection. The strength of the red stick is right on par with the Stibila 196. When it comes to elasticity though, the red stick didn't fare very well, or at least as well as we thought it would. And we looked at the numbers from our head-to-head -head test and red stick came in third, the third worst in our testing data. Uh, this isn't the whole story though, because when we, we applied the 320 pound loads to the opposite of the strong axis, the level returned flat again. Um, one concern, I guess, with longer levels and things like that is having too many cutouts, right? And that because the cutouts can weaken the frame. And the same principle applies to that middle cutout where that level vial is. So what some manufacturers have done is they create a metal, metal bridge across it, which creates conti continuous scribing, but also really strengthens it. Unfortunately, Milwaukee could not add that bridge to their design because Stabila has a patent issue on that. So they rely on that magnesium backbone. And they're looking at future innovations to improve to see, because the lack of bridge may affect strength over time. So you gotta be concerned about that. So they're looking at that and that's why they use that backbone. Um, let's talk about the end caps. The red stick has high density removable end caps to perfect, pr protect the frame from drops, but also to be removed in access corners for scribing. Uh, it's a two-part system, so it's a, a plastic type pull tab lever that actually disengages a rubber end cap. Um, and we found the level end caps to really hold securely and not loosen up over time and not fall out. You really had to make a conscious effort to remove it. Uh, we did like the Stabila end caps because they're all rubber, but they're, they're pretty darn close. As far as handles, cutout handles are useful for handling a level and most levels 48 inches and over have them. Milwaukee included one handle in their 32 inch level for overhead work and then two handles 48 inches and up. Let's talk about the level height. Height is often decided as a strength to weight ratio optimization. The more holes in the frame, the weaker the level. So sometimes manufacturers make the level higher. The red stick is taller than the Stabila. It is two and a half inches tall, which coincidentally is the height of a brick course. And masons often use levels as a gauge for their brick setting. So they were thinking about that. Um, durability, we did a drop test. I dropped the 48 inch uh, red stick, which is a most commonly used level. I dropped it 10 times from a height of six feet. Prior to dropping the level, I photographed and recorded the level and checked the level readings and plumb readings. After the test, the level unscathed. Measuring both plumb and level, it was perfect. Thirsty for a little bit more drama, I decided to toss the level up in the air 15 feet and let it, uh, almost hitting overhead power lines, and let it drop. I tossed it 10 times in the air and inspected it each time. The 15 foot toss did knock some plastic uh, plumb covers off of the level. It chipped one of the plastic ends and it dinged up the aluminum pretty badly. When I tested the plumb and level for accuracy, only the level vial was off a little bit. Uh, it also, when I checked it for flatness, it had a slight bow in the frame. So assuming you take care of your levels, this type of abusive testing, <laughs> it would simulate probably 10 years of daily use on a job site. I was beating the tar out of these. The moral of the story is, if you drop your level 10 times from 15 feet, then you need to go sit in the truck for the rest of the day. You should be holding a level. Uh, let's talk about vial strength. This was a fun one to do. I spoke to both Stabila and Milwaukee, and as you can imagine, both companies claim to have the stronger vial. Milwaukee, they use a high impact polymer acrylic for their vials, and they chose to pursue a different vial than Stabila block vials to achieve more durability. They claim 10 times more than Stabila. When a company makes a claim of 10 times, I wanna test that claim. So we decided to put the vials through an impact test. 
which I'm going to summarize a little bit. I, uh, I constructed a vial impact jig, rigging up some gas pipe. I filled it with fasteners, some nuts and bolts, and a metal plumb bob, which I rounded over, and a PVC pipe to jettison, to jettison my thing through. Um, the plumb bob tip represented concentrated point, which in my theory would cause like a piercing failure for say larger, more rounded mass of a hammer or maybe falling flat on the, on the concrete. The weighted pipe in total weighed six and a half pounds and I rigged it to drop 12 inches. So uh, this was, again, this was done to kind of simulate the impact of a tool or something dropping on the level and to demonstrate the impact strength of both the sharp sight red, red stick and the Stabilo 196 vials. So the Milwaukee, the Milwaukee vial, the, the level vial survived 25 consecutive hits with a six and a half pound weight at that 12 inch height. One of the strikes I didn't count because it was a glancing blow and it, it just chipped off some acrylic. Um, I could still read the bubble and the vial was intact. It had integrity. After 25 blows, I decided we're going to raise it up to 24 inches and I dropped it 13 more times until it completely failed. Uh, we noticed that the point of the plumb bob started to leave an indent after six strikes at that 24 inches and eventually it did pierce the vial and drain the fluid. It probably wasn't readable after that six hit either. The Stabila level failed, it actually smashed after one impact, 12 inches. Um, and the plumb vials also broke on one strike. We tested the plumb vials as well. Going back to the red stick levels, they're gonna be offering soft bags as well, probably July 2017. And they'll offer those soft bags in three ways. It'll be a standalone accessory bag from like $79 to $149. It'll be kitted as a jam kit, a contractor kit, master kit, and that'll range from $299 to $399 with, a, um, with levels or promotional offerings, which could be anything. Um, they also are gonna offer a new level to compete with the Stabila R-beam level, so that should be interesting. So look guys, which level's best? Stabila, Milwaukee, what, who's got the king of levels? There's no coincidence that Milwaukee priced this level the same as Stabila. Milwaukee is making a concerted effort to position itself with and fight for that coveted king of levels. It's important to remember that this is Milwaukee's first release against Stabilo. And while personally I'm not 100% convinced that Red Stick is better, a better level than Stabilo, I am convinced that they're close. In fact, this new healthy competition, I'm sure, is undoubtedly going to get Stabilo to sharpen their pencil a little bit. Overall, the red stick levels were impressive. A few things here and there, but overall they were impressive. It still feels a little bit like a work in progress. Many people right now that I've been hearing are saying that Milwaukee's a power tool company and they're offering a box level just to say that they have a level, they've got a red level. Um, I can tell you that this is definitely not the case. This is a very durable, really nicely constructed level. While it hasn't reached that coveted king of level category yet, it's definitely created a level worthy of the aristocracy. If I were Stabila, I'd be watching the Red Stick release real closely. I'm Rob Robillard. Please consider subscribing to our video channel. Just click that button below and we'll see you at the next tool review. Take care.